Hi, welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to give you five reasons and two power tips as to why you should show the media page in DaVinci Resolve some love and affection. So the first step in any project is usually importing and the media page provides flexibility when it comes to locating and importing your media files. The media storage panel lets you intuitively navigate the files and folders on your system. Frequently used locations can be saved by right clicking and adding them to a list of favourites. And here's a power tip for you. You can quickly jump to anywhere on your system by just dragging its folder from your OS into the media storage browser. The browser window itself lets you view your source media using live preview. And you can quickly view the media properties by clicking the icon in the bottom right corner of the thumbnail. You can also, of course, view this information and more using list view, or by selecting the files and referring directly to the metadata panel, all before you've actually imported anything into your project. Even before importing your media files, you should think about backing up that precious source media, especially if it's just come from a camera and it's the only copy that you've got. One of the easily overlooked parts of the media page is the clone tool. This unassuming window lets you create an exact copy of your source footage to one or more destination locations with just a few clicks. Start by clicking the Add Job button. Then, simply drag a location from the media storage containing the media files you need cloning to the source area of the job. Do the same to add any number of destination folders where you want the media to be copied to, remembering that you can always clone your media to multiple backup drives if needed. You can also right click on any media storage location or folder to quickly add it as a clone source or destination to the selected job. With the source and destination set, click the clone button to start the process. Files in the source location will be copied to each of the destination locations, together with a media hash list and a checksum file as confirmation of the accuracy of the clone data. When it comes to actually importing the media files, sure, you could just simply drag the files directly into the media pool, but the media page has some more flexible options for the more discerning importers amongst us. If I select all of these folders here and right click, you'll see I've got three main options at the top of this menu. The first imports the files that are located directly inside these folders, ignoring any subfolders. The second option imports all the files inside the folder plus any subfolders. This second option is what happens if you simply drag and drop the folders into the media pool and is especially useful if you're importing camera media that's stored across multiple folders. This final option allows you to import the folders as a series of bins. This is useful if your media has already been organized into folders on your hard drive. And here's that second power tip I promised you, which is going to be especially useful if you work with the same bin layout across multiple projects. In your operating system, create a series of folders on your hard drive for the bins that you will need. Then import these empty folders into Resolve using the Create Bins option, or simply drag them directly into your bin list. Voila, instant bin structure for your projects. And next on my list is the Media Pages dedicated audio panel. The first tab on the audio panel shows individual meters for each audio channel of a clip, with even stereo audio being shown as two channels. <laughs> my name is Chris Lang and I'm the founder of Orion Mountain Outfitters. Uh, we are you can't do much more than monitor the channels here, but it's useful to be able to see how many audio channels a clip has and can help in deciding which channels may be of use in an edit. The channels themselves, of course, can be further configured in the clip attributes. Oregon Mountain Outfitters is a lifestyle and outdoor brand that not only promotes the outdoors, but also gives back at the same time to our communities that we live in. And my final tip for the media page also involves the audio panel, which you can use to help you manually sync audio and video clips. 
Now the automatic syncing options are great, I use them all the time, but what happens if you don't have good guide audio or the time code between the two clips isn't 100% accurate? Here I've synced the clip using time code, but it's not quite right. If I jog over that clap, you can see that obviously it's not in sync. Switching the audio panel to the waveform tab allows you to unlink the audio using this link unlink button. And you can now use the different viewers to manually locate the video and audio sync points. Jog through to find where his hands are closed and in the viewer for the audio, I'll just line up on that first clap point. Now the playheads are at the correct positions, I can click the link unlink audio button again to instantly relink the files, this time in sync. Don't forget to check out some of my other videos on working with DaVinci Resolve and thank you very much for all of your comments so far, especially from all of my new subscribers. I read each and every one of them so please keep them coming. But until next time, take care.